Would you like to see venipuncture techniques to find veins easily and draw blood in one go? The process I would like to share with you, position, angle, maneuver, is the system I created to organize my thinking in the same way we organize our equipment. It has helped me with thousands of patients. However, do you think it's possible, with the right patients, right training, to guarantee that we can draw blood in one go? Whether it's drawing blood or any important task in life, I don't want to depend on luck, especially when someone's life depends on it. Do you think we need luck? Or do we need practice and technique? Almost everyone should be able to have a successful blood test on the first attempt, without depending on luck in the way I used to when I first started practicing. Can good technique like position, angle and maneuver help us get there? My father was misdiagnosed partly because of a series of unsuccessful blood test attempts. This taught me the importance of getting it right first time, every time. But a bit like driving, some say I'm wasting your time trying to show you something that needs practice. They say I should just focus on the basics like establishing rapport, checking the ID, request form and prerequisite fasting and medication. Having gained consent, washed our hands, donned our apron and gloves, cleaned our tray and trolley, checked our sharps bin, prepared the gear and gauze, we're ready to go, right? Or are we? We can apply the tourniquet between 7 and 10 centimeters or 3 to 4 inches from the point of puncture, far enough to avoid our sterile area, close enough to maintain adequate pressure in the vein. We can use a quick release knot which increases tension and reduces pinching, making it faster and easier to remove. keeping it on for a total of less than 60 seconds in order to prevent falsely elevated potassium and hemoconcentration. Instead of resorting to fist pumping and vein tapping, which can also cause the same problems, we can use gravity before applying a tourniquet to help fill up the veins. We can select the median cubital vein, feeling its springy texture even if we can't see it, or choosing hand dorsum veins as an alternative. We can keep our equipment on our non-dominant side to avoid crossing our arms or swapping hands we can use the World Health Organization guidance of 30 degrees or less, insert until flashback, and then fill our syringe or bottles. Fill completely, remove tourniquet, then pressurize the gauze only after removing the needle. Disposing our sharp safely, and then inverting our tubes as soon as possible. Then we label at the bedside and double check against the form, thanking our patient for their help. But if it was that simple, why are around half of all blood tests unsuccessful within the industry average time limit of six minutes? Imagine how many extra nurses and other healthcare professionals we could have with all the resources we waste on failed venipuncture attempts? With so many things to concentrate on, where do we start? Do we need a change of perspective? If I'm going to get somewhere, I'm not going to rely on luck. Dad raised us to understand the details of what we do, rather than just mindlessly copying our peers. So what does body position have to do with drawing blood? Well, like our writing style, we all naturally move our needles in our own line, and finding the direction of that line and matching it with the direction of the vein often means we need to realign our body position to ensure we follow the vein with our needle line. But does it really matter what angle we use with our needle? Roger Hoke's excellent book on phlebotomy gives us more guidance on angle, specifying 15 to 25 degrees. An insertion angle shallower than 15 degrees can increase pain, whilst an insertion angle steeper than 25 degrees can contribute to veins rolling or puncturing straight through the lower wall of the vein. Now, what else is left in the maneuver apart from anchoring our hand, inserting and looking for flashback? As you can see here, only half of the needle lumen is in the vein, which will show flashback even though we are not fully in the vein. Inserting by only another 2 millimeters or 1 16th of an inch will ensure that you are fully in the vein. But isn't this all just a waste of time? How does position help us find veins easily when they are often buried deep under the skin? 
How can anger help us draw blood on the first try when some veins are hard, whilst other veins are soft? After all, there is an infinite range of angles between 15 and 25 degrees, so where do we start? How do we actually do the maneuver when there are different needles and styles of holding them? Is a blood test really that important anyway? It was for my dad. He was 68 at the time, with an incurable lung disease. Some say I'm just overcomplicating things. They say not to waste time on too much detail. With all of the different variables in taking blood, maybe I just have to accept that luck plays a part. Dad died nearly three years ago. His treatment, unlimited oxygen, was poisoning his brain with carbon dioxide narcosis because he also had COPD, which had not been diagnosed, partly because of a series of failed attempts at taking blood. But ultimately, it was my responsibility, both as a son and a doctor. We don't accept failure in road safety do we have to accept it in venipuncture? There is so much more to position, angle, and maneuver which will help us draw blood in one go. Just like drivers keep everyone safe with mirror, signal, and maneuver. There are three primary aspects to each component of position, angle, and maneuver. Position of the patient to ensure that they are comfortable and supported in case they flinch due to pain and to highlight their veins, both visually and on palpation. Position of your body to ensure our natural needle line is matched with the direction of their vein. Position of our hand with the needle to help set the needle angle correctly. Speaking of angle, where do we start? Here. If you look at the hour hand on any watch or clock, when the time is 2.20, the hour hand is at 20 degrees relative to the horizon. Shallow low angles are better for soft, fragile or small veins. Steeper high angles are better for hard, calcified or larger veins. The median angle of Roger Hoke's range is 20 degrees, which is roughly half the angle of our pen relative to a writing surface. As for maneuver, we need to advance two millimeters or a sixteenth of an inch after flashback. This ensures we are fully in the vein. Then we can flatten the angle and advance further. Finally, we should anchor the needle in its final position as we withdraw our syringe plunger or connect our bottles. Now, do you think it's equally important to draw blood with less pain? How can we make a blood draw hurt less? Here, we position the arm on a table to minimize the risk of the patient pulling back too far due to pain. Here, I align my body to use my natural needle line of 45 degrees counterclockwise to the sagittal plane, and I ensure it's aligned with the vein. You might like to watch our dedicated position video for more information. Because this vein is small and non-palpable, I know it's soft and possibly fragile, therefore, I select a lower, shallower angle, between 15 and 20 degrees. Because I am using a shallower angle, I try to insert just a little quicker to try to minimize pain. A steeper angle with higher insertion speed is more likely to do this. There are so many other questions we're working on right now, the most important of which is how to turn a failing blood draw into a success. That's coming soon. But if you take only one thing away from today, remember to always stabilize your hand. Now, what about difficult rolling veins? Using hand dorsum veins as an example, we can flex the metacarpophalangeal joints and the wrist to straighten out rolling veins. There are actually more than 10 different variables for each of position, angle and maneuver which is why we have filmed separate videos for each of them to bring you the best techniques we possibly can. Here, my wife deliberately demonstrates the wrong position and wrong angle, causing a failed attempt and quite a bit of pain. When she follows position, angle and maneuver, she succeeds without even trying, and I hardly felt anything.
So what do you think? Can we guarantee, at least for the right patients, that we can draw blood in one go? Let me know in the comments below. And do we need to depend on luck? Either way, with position, angle, and maneuver on your side, I hope we get to see your skills shine through. Hitting your targets not only in venipuncture, but using systematic thinking for life.